Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. If you are not yet making your own stock or broth, this is one of the easiest from scratch things you can learn how to do. It's super healthy. You can use it as just a really nutritious drink, if, especially if people like it when they're ill, or you can use it for cooking or make, and making soups as a base, etc., etc. It has so many uses. And whatever you make at home is gonna be so much better than anything you can use at the store. And it's also a great no waste project. So if you are used to buying, say, a whole chicken at the store and you roast it and then you throw away the bones and the giblets, this is a way to make use of those and turn it into something really healthy. So first, a couple of things to know. You can use any type of bones from an animal that you would eat. So most common, of course, would be chicken or beef, but I often do ham bones. You could do any kind of pork bone, really. You could do venison. You can also use the same basic procedure to make vegetable stock. So my rule of thumb when I'm using bones is if I have already cooked the meat with the bone in it, the bones that I'm using, I can just throw them in the pot. If the bones are, say, from butchering or from the butcher shop, say you bought, you know, cattle bones, uh, beef bones, um, then a, it's a better idea to roast them first. And all that entails is just putting it in a roasting pan and roasting them until they're good and golden and brown. And that's gonna give your stock much better flavor. And it's also going to help draw out any of the collagen in the bones, which is one of the major important ingredients in stock or broth. Um, and what is the difference between stock and broth? Well, you know, I've read about this for years and it doesn't seem like anybody has a very good answer. And so a lot of people use the terms interchangeably, which I'm kind of doing today. But I think technically a stock has a lot more collagen in it than a broth. A broth is sort of a thinner, less flavorful, and again, has less collagen in it. When I first started making stock, I would go out and buy vegetables to put in the pot, but you don't have to do that. It's much smarter to just save scraps from when you're cooking. For example, when you cut up an onion for cooking, you typically, getting rid of the peels, the outside peel, and also the ends, right? So I just take these and I throw them in a freezer bag that I keep in the freezer. And then when I am ready to make stock, I can just pull out a bunch of vegetable scraps. I've also got some leek tops, you know, the part you typically don't use in cooking. You're just looking for things that are gonna add nutrition and flavor. Other common things to add would be carrots, celery, um, so you can do virtually anything. You just don't want it to be too overwhelming in flavor if you're trying, if you're going after a bone stock, because obviously the feature flavor should be the mo the the bones or the the meaty flavor from the bones. Um, I do the same thing with bones. For example, this Christmas we had a ham. Uh, I picked as much meat as I could off the bone without going crazy and then I threw it in the fri or in the freezer rather. Um, I do the same thing with turkey and chicken and whatever other meats we have. You can use, let's say you had ribs, even though you're gnawing on those bones, you can still save those and use those to make stock because all of the germs get, you know, get killed when you're cooking the stock. So don't be afraid to use those either. Today I am going to be using an instant pot to make my stock but you definitely don't have to do it this way. Uh, the traditional method is just to take a regular cooking pot and do it on your stove, and that is perfectly fine. The only reason I really use my Instant Pot, because it's not a very big pot, really, and I like to do big pots of stock. Uh, I get a little greedy about getting as much stock from those bones as I possibly can. Uh, but where I live in this rural area, 
I have a gas stove that it uses a smallish, you know, about this size propane tank. And as you can imagine, it's kind of a pain when that runs out. And so whenever I can, I try to use electricity instead. So today I'm using the Instant Pot. So I'm just going to take the bones. This happens to be rabbit. I'm just throwing it in the pot. And then I'm going to take some of my vegetable scraps. I probably don't need to use them all. This is leek. And honestly, that's probably plenty right there. And then I'm gonna throw in some onion. By the way, with the onion, don't throw away the papery outer part because it adds nutrition and also a beautiful golden color to your stock. So just throw that in as well. This is just what I have on around today. Like I said, you can use whatever vegetable scraps you have on hand. Okay. So these are all frozen and that's fine. They can go into the pot frozen. Now, I like to add salt because if you don't eat a processed food diet or you don't go out to eat a lot, you actually need salt in your diet. It helps make your body function correctly. It's actually the sodium, not the salt. But by the way, this is not Morton salt. I just happened to use that shaker. I really like Redmond's sea salt. Um, and the reason I buy that, first of all, it tastes fantastic because it's full of all kinds of good minerals. But uh, I have grown concerned about microplastics in our food and it's really evident in sea salt. Um, and so I came to Redmond's by way of looking for a salt that was tested negative for microplastics. And the reason it doesn't have microplastics is it's not coming from the modern day ocean. Um, it's coming from an ancient seabed. Anyway, so I recommend that and I'll put a link in the description. So salt it however you like. I usually put less salt in if I'm doing a ham, for example, because there is enough of that saltiness from the ham that it would be overpowering if I put a bunch of salt in. And next, pepper. And you could put bay leaf and other things like that in there, but I like to keep it simple because for me, this is sort of a base ingredient for cooking. And so I would prefer to add other flavors as I cook, depending on what I'm cooking. So. There it is in the pot. Now, I'm gonna add water. Now, I don't go bonkers over whether or not my stock is gelatinous, um, but I can tell you the secret about how to make it that way. First of all, let me just say that all stock you make with bones has the collagen in it that creates that gelatinous texture in in traditional stock. It's just that if your stock is more liquidy, it's more diluted. So I don't really care all that much. I'd rather get more stock personally, but that's again, a personal preference. But the trick is if you really want that good gelatinous um, texture is don't add as much water. Um, just cover your ingredients by say an inch or two with water and you should get that good gelatinous texture as long as you cook it long enough. But I'm not all that picky and you already know that I'm a little bit greedy about stock. <laughs> so I tend to make it a little more watery because I get more that way. One thing about using the Instant Pot is you don't want to overfill it. So definitely be familiar with your Instant Pot and know where the maximum fill line is because if you overfill it, when it comes to pressure, uh, it may spurt water everywhere, very hot water. So definitely not what you're after. Okay, now if I was using just a regular pot and cooking this on the stove, I would set it on the stove uh, over a sort of medium heat and bring it to a simmer and then I would keep it simmering. If you boil it, which you can do, but it's um, unnecessary and it may affect the flavor somewhat, 
In addition, it will make your stock kind of cloudy, which is not a really big deal um, as far as I'm concerned. Some people are, say they can taste a difference. Um, so just keep it gently simmering and you are gonna simmer that for hours. Um, and you can add additional liquid to it if you need to. You're just gonna simmer it until that stock looks nice and golden. And of course it depends on what kind of stock you're making as to how golden it's going to be. So if it's vegetable stock, it's gonna be a light golden. If it's chicken stock or rabbit stock, it's going to be a little more golden but not super dark. Beef stock, on the other hand, or maybe venison is should be rather dark. Ham stock is pretty dark as well. So you can always taste it. Stick a spoon in, and let it cool, and have a taste to see if you like the flavor yet, okay? So, but this is Instant Pot, so I'm gonna put the pan in here. Um, one other thing that you consider adding to your stock, it's not necessary, but you can consider it, is a splash of vinegar. This happens to be apple cider vinegar. Woo, that was maybe a little too much, but it'll be okay. But you could also use white vinegar. And the whole idea behind that is just to help leach the bones, getting all those good nutrients out of the bones. It just helps. Again, not necessary. I will also mention that you can use bones for stock repeatedly. <laughs> See, my greediness comes out again. So, for example, uh, if I have a chicken carcass, I can use that at least probably three times. Um, you kind of just have to judge as if your most recent batch of stock from those bones is starting to look a little more pale, then they're done, you know? But it's kind of cool to know that you can do that. Okay, so there is some debate about how long you should cook stock in an Instant Pot. Generally speaking, I say longer is better um, because you're just going to get more of the nutrients out of the bone the longer you cook it. For example, a few days ago, I did a ham bone and I put it in my Instant Pot for two hours. I would do the same thing with beef or venison, um, but these are lighter bones, rabbit and chicken, they're very light bones, or if you're doing vegetable stock, obviously you don't need to cook it quite as long. So I'm going to go for 50 minutes on this. Um, and I think that'll be pretty good timing. So I'm just hitting manual and then I'm making sure it's on 50 minutes. There. And I'm just gonna let the machine do its magic. Um, so once the Instant Pot tells me 50 minutes is over, I'm going to let it naturally release. But again, you do not have to use an Instant Pot for this. You can just simmer it on your stove and that's really simple too. Just keep an eye on it, make sure it's on a low simmer and that it doesn't run out of water. I'll meet you back here again when the Instant Pot's done. All right, it's been a little over an hour because remember I'm using an Instant Pot and it takes a little time to come up to pressure, then it's gonna run the 50 minutes and then I'm letting the pressure go down naturally. If you have used a pot on the stove, you've let it simmer for probably at least four hours and then you can just turn off the heat and move on to the next step. Okay, now the next step is simply to strain. You wanna get out the chunks of stuff. Incidentally, when you make stock, oftentimes there's still meat on the bone. And that meat, oh, I'm having a hard time getting this. There we go. That meat is now super tender and easily comes off the bone. Therefore, you can throw it into a meal. You could put it into a soup, you could put it into a salad, whatever you'd like. Don't waste it. It helps if you put the strainer in place. I remember once when my children were very little and I was obviously very tired, I made a beautiful pot of chicken stock and I drained it and all the stock went down the sink because I had the strainer out but no pot underneath it. Don't be like me. Okay. Of 
more carefully because it is hot. If you want, you can let it cool a bit first. Okay. Woo, fogged up my glasses. Let me show you what that looks like. Now, I can sort through all this later. Um, the vegetables, the vegetable pieces, they can just go in the compost or do the chickens. And then of course, the meat I'll save for something else. But now, I have a pot of beautiful stock. But we're not done yet. There's another very important step that you need to take. First, I want you to see what the stock looks like right now. So this really important step is to allow this to cool a little bit and then you're going to stick it in the refrigerator. The reason you need to stick it in the refrigerator is that there's fat in it. Obviously if you have vegetable broth this isn't the case but if you're using any type of bones there's some fat in it and uh, while natural fats are really good for you your body needs natural fats it's gonna make your stock taste to most people it'll taste yucky. Um, in fact, when I have talked to people who said, oh, help me, I've tried making stock and it turns out gross, I always find out that they've skipped this step. So what happens in the refrigerator is that all the fat's gonna rise to the top and it's going to get hard. And you'll just scrape that off and you'll have beautiful stock. I'll show you tomorrow, okay? Hi everyone, it is the next morning. Just to recap, yesterday I threw some bones in my Instant Pot, is how I made my bone broth. You can do it on the stove. And when it was done and the pressure came down naturally, I stuck it in the refrigerator overnight. And I want you to see what it looks like now. So now you can see there is sort of light colored stuff on the top, and that is the fat that has risen to the top, and we want to remove that. To do that, I just use a slotted spoon. And if you're lucky, you get big globs like this. And I just stick it in a separate bowl for now. You'll want to dispose of that probably in your garbage. While you do want to remove as much of the fat as you can, you don't need to get too fussy about little pieces. It's impossible to get every little last scrap. Removing this fat not only makes the stock safe to can or use some other preserving methods, but it's gonna make it taste better. That fat can taste pretty nasty sometimes, depending upon your bones and what other ingredients you're using. And that's really all there is to it. I can now store this in the refrigerator for, oh, conservatively, I would say about a week. If you wanna store it longer than that, I certainly have done that. Uh, I usually, in those cases, will boil the stock for 10 minutes before then I use it in cooking, just to make sure that any bacteria or something that might make you, make you sick gets killed by the heat of boiling. Um, or you could freeze this. Uh, I have frozen it in like Ziploc bags. I prefer the pint size, and I don't overfill it so that I can lay it, the bag flat in the freezer. And then once it's solid, you can prop it up like this and it saves a lot of room in the freezer. Or you can use canning jars to freeze it. Now, you will notice these are just pint-sized jars, but no matter what size jar you use, there are some that are straight up and down on the sides. And there are some that have like this little rounded shoulder. You don't want to use the type with the rounded shoulder for anything that you're going to freeze because the likelihood of that jar breaking is much higher. Use the type that are straight up and down and then give a good two inches of head space. That is the space between the top of the food and the top of the jar. And that allows for expansion when your stock freezes. It stores very well that way. Other options are maybe dehydrating. 
Um, so I cannot find any information from sites that I would normally go to about food safety, such as the National Center for Home Food Preservation, about dehydrating meat stock, meat bone stock, or broth. Um, but a lot of people do it. So here is my recommendation. You know, first of all, just know that because it's not tested safe, there's a certain amount of risk. But if you go ahead and dehydrate broth or stock, my recommendation is to then store it in the freezer long term or short term in the refrigerator, just like you would jerky that you made with your dehydrator. That's the recommendation for that as well. So how do you dehydrate stock in a dehydrator? You would need to have the solid plastic covers for your trays uh, that people use for fruit roll-ups or something similar. And you're obviously going to have to very carefully pour and not have it go over the sides. And you know, it seems weird that you would take a liquid and dehydrate it and you'd have anything left, but you do, you get a powder and you can use it like you would bouillon powder or you know just sprinkling it in your dish or you can rehydrate it with water and use it like regular liquid stock. Um, another thing that you can do and I, I do this this is my preference I use my freeze dryer it's an amazing tool and it comes out as this very light foam that again I can just sprinkle that and use it like bouillon powder or I can rehydrate it as desired. And finally another option is to can it this is an excellent way to make it shelf stable virtually forever. So uh, you want to use the ball guidelines or the National Center for Home Food Preservation guidelines to properly pressure can your stock. And I will put a link to that in the description. And that's it. It's really simple, really healthy, and a great way to reduce waste in your kitchen. So if you have any questions at all about making stock, and preserving it or using it, or questions about other homesteading topics, please leave a comment below. I always answer or respond to any comments that you have. And if, as usual, I always appreciate likes and shares and subscribers as well. Thank you so much. Happy eating. Bye.